hello everyone i'm abhishek i'm your host for uh, gtm voice podcast i will take you through proven b2b go to marketing strategies and tactics in order to do this uh, we'll be speaking with experts who have done this for years uh, and today i have a very special guest joining me for this podcast uh, welcome uh, sanjay hey abhishek appreciate you having me uh, give you a brief intro for sanjay and but let him introduce uh, for himself So Sanjay Shah is the director of Visionary Digital Studios. Uh they are a fast growing video marketing agency based in Australia. Uh he helps B2B tech companies get more high value clients with video content and social media marketing. Uh Sanjay, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. And I know that I did a really short intro but I think I'll just let you introduce yourself uh, to the audience. No, that was beautiful. That was that, that was perfect and concise. So Essentially, seven years ago, we started as a, a video agency, and literally just a small animation studio, and, and that's all we did. Uh, but over time, I, I realized that just producing one video for a business doesn't really create any impact. So over the last few years, we've developed in a, into a full-scale B two B marketing agency. We still have that core of producing really good videos, but then we make sure that we actually create impact and actually create results. using digital marketing and and digital strategy. Awesome Sanjay. Sanjay so I was doing a bit of research uh, before getting on to uh, this call and I saw that you know you were uh, talking a lot about the four pillars of B2B marketing. Uh could you just tell our audience uh, what that is and like uh, and what we can learn from that? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so so we call it our four layer approach and I feel like um it's quite similar to what many B2B marketers would be doing but because we're an agency we work with so many clients we we get right inside so many businesses um we've added a lot of kind of um complexity or a lot of techniques on top of uh what a what a standard B2B marketing funnel looks like so from a high level uh the four layer approach um essentially that first layer is just trying to uh show a short video to a big audience um say an audience of about 40,000 to 80,000 people if you're talking in LinkedIn terms um we want to show them a short video and just see who bites so the way that we do it is um we'll show short 40 second clips and then we'll see who watches for 25% so for 10 seconds of that clip and then we can move them from that first layer into layer 2 where they start seeing much longer form content and much more conversion heavy content are you with me so far Yeah, so we actually implement this on all platforms, um especially LinkedIn ads for the B2B. Uh but we also have B2B clients running on Facebook ads and even Google ads as well. Similar sorts of principles. So you want to show a short piece of content first, find out who in that audience is actually interested. You can move them into a layer 2 audience, which is a lot smaller, but you can show them a lot more frequent content and a lot more long form content to to get the most out of your budget. All right and that's layer number 1 and layer number 2 and what is 3 and 4 beautiful yeah so i feel like most most marketers kind of stop at that layer 1 and level, layer 2 especially in agency world so at layer 2 um you've got the the longer form content designed to convert someone into a demo or convert someone onto that initial call uh they become a lead because they've seen a couple of pieces of content especially because they've seen a couple of pieces of long form content by the time they get onto that initial call or initial demo they are a qualified lead and they're kind of self selected themselves but then layer 3 kicks in i think this is really important uh it be a b we all know this um sales cycles often 3 to 9 months sometimes they go over years so you need to make sure that while they're in that sales cycle they're seeing your content frequently um really important that they're seeing all sorts of different types of content covering different angles different features especially differentiators of your service so that while they're going through your sales process while they're going through the other two sales processes or the other two proposals they're mandated to evaluate they're always seeing your content they're always being educated by your brand so that kind of um gives you a bit of an edge up over the competitors that may have you know done the layer 1 and layer 2 got them in as a lead but forgotten to keep marketing to them while they're in that sales process So that's layer 3. If you've done that well, then 
you deliver a great sales process, maybe it runs over three months, maybe it runs over nine months, but they've seen so much of your content that eventually they really have no other option but to choose you because you've educated them so much. Then kicks in layer four, and I, I feel like this is where um, the most possible value is in B2B, but I think a lot of marketers forget about this, and this is what I'm really excited about. With B2B companies, usually most of the lifetime value comes after that sale is made. So it's so important that that marketing and engine doesn't stop. So when they're in layer four, they're already customers. So you don't have to be so produced with the videos that you produce, or you don't have to be so uh, overly high, high production value with the content you're producing, but it needs to be frequent. It needs to be continuous and it needs to be very familiar. So uh, with layer four marketing, we like to feature our delivery team or we like to feature um, people in the office or, you know, what's happening around the office so that current customers are being educated continually by us. They're seeing our brand in their newsfeed. They're seeing our people in their newsfeed. So they're more likely to stay. They're more likely to upsell to other services. So that's kind of a quick high level overview of those four layers. Let me see if I can summarize this. Uh, so like layer one is uh, like take 60 to 80,000 audience and like run videos and then 25% uh, whoever has watched 25% move them to the next layer of the funnel, or show them a little more targeted ads. And then layer three is when, you know, you do different kinds of ads for different persona. Uh, and then layer four, you do these layer four after you set. Did I get that right? Yeah, you got that right. I, I think um, I can clarify that a bit, but you got that right. So layer three, um, that's when they're in your CRM, they're, they're in the sales process. So they're going to start seeing longer form content about why you're different, why you're unique. Layer four, they're already customers. So they're marked as closed one in your CRM. So now you can show now you can show your delivery team. Now you can talk about your product features. Now you can teach them how to best use your services. Okay, this is wonderful. Uh, so I think I, I think I kind of get an understanding that you know video is like super powerful across the funnel. Like uh how do you use video across the funnel and uh, what kind of an impact uh, have you seen uh, for your clients through the years? Yeah, so we started just producing, you know, one video for a client and and that's about it. Uh, and what we notice is there's not really many results. Often, um, if we produce a really good quality, high high quality video handed over to a customer, they put it on their website and they not, don't really see any ROI. So, we realized that you really got to use video skillfully and you got to use it across the, the whole funnel. So as a summary to the way we use video specifically, the first layer, the cold audience, we tend to show them shorter videos and more than anything, it's just to, to allow them to self-select as to whether they're interested in our work. So on LinkedIn or Facebook, we, we like to make those videos 40 seconds. Um, usually what we'll do is we'll produce a, a beautiful two-minute video explaining a service, explaining why you're different, explaining how you address pain points. To layer one, we'll show a 40 second cut of that video. We know that if they've watched 10 seconds of that video, that they're engaged. We know that there's something that's caught their attention about our service. So that's when we start showing them layer two ads. We show them the full two minute long videos. Maybe we'll show different versions of those videos. That two minute video is designed to kind of engage them a little bit more because they already know our brand. They're much more likely to linger and watch more of that video. Then when it comes to layers three and four, we, we use much longer form content uh, and we'll feature our salespeople in those in that layer three content as well. So um, because they're engaged in your sales process, they're much more likely to watch a three, four, five minute, even up to 10 minute video because they're about yeah, your proposal, they're, they're really trying to learn. Then in, in phase four, in layer four, once they're already customers, that's when we start to use uh, a bit a bit more kind of off-the-cuff, uh, lower sort of production value content that's a, a bit more authentic. As a good example, I'll check this, this type of podcast is something that we'll show to our, our layer four audience. So they already know who you are. Um, they're already working with you. They're already learning from you. So they're much more likely to watch, you know, 20, 30-minute piece of content and and they recognize you on their feed. So um, so, so they appreciate seeing your delivery team a lot. So, I mean, Sanjay, I mean, this, is a, uh, this is a question that I have. I mean, what message do you have uh, for marketers who think uh, that 
attention spans have gotten like really, really short. And we're talking about showing a 10, 20, 30 minute video. Uh, I love this. I get this a lot. Uh, so yes, attention spans are, are, are reducing significantly. Um, it's very easy to do a Google search and you can see that, you know, the average customer has an eight second attention span, less than a goldfish, or uh, you can even do the research on videos and the average person doesn't watch more than two minutes, if that, of a video. And that's hundred percent right. But those are, those are really generic rules um, and generally designed for B2C audiences. So if you really think about a B2B audience, if someone is making a five or six figure purchase, they will watch a long video. If they're really interested to work with you and they've got to make that big decision with a with a board of decision makers, uh, they've got to d- decide between three proposals. Of course, they're going to sit through a two minute video. They, they'll sit through a 10 minute video if they're making a, a decision that's five or six figures. That, that that's awesome, Sanjay. I think you know I, that just uh, dispels the myth uh, that most of us hold that you know, hey, you can't make long form videos. Uh, it's generally not watched, and I think you've made it super clear that uh, if they are going to buy a five or six figure uh, deal, they are going to sit through uh, some of this content. I love it, and I, I want to, um, based on your comments, I want to uh, clarify or add to that a little bit. In that, um, you notice when I was talking through the the four layer framework. The further, the deeper down they are in that funnel, as they get to uh, layer two, the video gets a little bit longer. When they get to layer three, the video gets longer again because they're more engaged, they know us, they're learning from us. By the time they get to layer four, they're hungry for information. If you're delivering a great service, uh, part of that service is educating your audience and educating your customers, teaching them how to get the most value out of your service. So. In layer four, you can really show them long form videos. Layer three, while well, they're in, in your sales cycle, anything longer than two minutes, they will consume. Awesome, Sanjay. That's that's a, that's a really useful insight. And I think for those of us uh, who believe that uh, uh, attention spans have gotten shorter, I think this is a very good eye opener for us. All right, moving on. Um, so I think we've talked uh, some really good stuff about video, but I think uh, there, I'm sure there must have been cases uh, where it might not have worked uh, for some of your clients. What were your observations uh, when video or uh, this layered approach actually didn't work? And what do you think happened? Yeah, absolutely. It, the the four layer approach um, isn't isn't applicable for every type of business, and even even video isn't applicable for every type of business. So, uh, as an example, if you're if you're trying to sell uh, you know products off the newsfeed through a uh, e-com store. Uh, you don't really need to have long videos. You don't need to have a four layer approach. Um, if you've got a simple service, you know, if you're a plumber, for example, um, you can put an ad on the newsfeed or you can put a Google ad that leads to a landing page that books a, uh, books a, a call and makes a sale. So I don't think every business should use video. I think it's overkill for a lot, if not most businesses. I feel like if you're trying to inspire someone, a decision maker to make a five, six, even seven K, uh, seven figure deal, then video is a way that you can explain so much in so little time. Um, but it, you know, the, the ROI has to be worth it. And I think, uh, I always say that minimum 10 K deals is worthy of a video funnel. Um, preferably more like 30, 40 K plus deals are worthy of a video funnel. All right. Sanjay, so, uh, You've worked with a lot of clients and I'm sure uh, video may have worked in some clients and may not have worked in some. Can you just uh, walk us through where video is applicable, the four-layer approach is applicable and where it shouldn't be actually used? Yeah, that's an awesome question, Abhishek, because uh, it's definitely not applicable for all companies um, and all companies shouldn't be using um, videos. Sometimes it's not appropriate. Uh, In the early days of my company, we would guilty or more than more inexperienced in um convincing companies to use video when it, when it wasn't appropriate so we've learned the lessons the hard way so the truth is if you're doing lower ticket deals there's just not enough value to be um creating yeah. polished high quality videos um maybe you want to create smaller videos and you know maybe you want to have a smaller scale marketing funnel but, but you don't need a beautifully polished video put into a, a four layer framework strategy or, or anything like that so the way the way that i judge it when i'm working with prospects is 
I think the minimum deal size should be 10k or above if you want to uh, if you want to produce yes. videos and then and then lay it over uh, a four layer framework, um, but preferably Jeez. more like 30k plus. Uh, and the reason is because uh, if you're if you've got a lower ticket product, you're much better off spending your your money on ad spend directly rather than spending your money on producing videos. Um, in combination with the ad spend, right? So as a, a really good example, if, if you're a, uh, a a company like a plumber, for example, or, you know, um, you've got smaller ticket deals, then, then there's really no need to create four layers and create all sorts of videos in every layer and all that sort of thing. It's absolute overkill. But when you're a B2B company and you're looking to inspire decision makers to make 30K plus deals, to make six and seven K, uh, six and seven figure deals then you really need a polished funnel that takes them through it a buyer's journey and kind of um, takes them from not knowing anything about you to really feeling your value proposition awesome sanjay i think uh i, I think we're all clear that you know i think uh, in high ticket deals i think video is is a great addition but if you're doing smaller ticket sizes i think uh the four layer approach may not be the right thing to you Totally, yeah. and I guess um, I didn't answer your your other question. I'll, I want to be a bit uh, kind of a transparent and authentic where where we've made mistakes in the past. Um, I, I think the biggest mistake uh, that we were making in the early days was trying to show a cold audience a long two minute video and then uh, wondering why they weren't responsive. And the reason is because you know you know that your products can help that cold audience, but they've got a thousand other brands competing for their attention space. So you don't want to show them a two-minute video. You can't expect them to engage with a long two-minute narrative. Right? And we made some bad mistakes in the early days where we tried to show these long videos um, and then you know we failed to build up a, a good remarketing audience because it's difficult to get a cold audience to engage with 30 seconds of video. But we really switched down to that shorter form, sort of 40-second style video for the cold audience and then move them through a funnel, that's when the longer form videos worked really well. All right, Sanjay, I think uh, everybody makes mistakes, but I think it's uh, the good news is you survived, and I think that's what matters. And I think I, think I kind of get uh, a feeling that, you know, the deeper you go into the funnel, the longer the video gets. Is, would that be accurate? Absolutely that, yeah, absolutely that. So um, the, the deeper they get in the funnel, the more engaged they are with your brand, the more value exchange there is between you and them. They're giving you more revenue. You're giving them a lot more service. So when you have a deeper relationship, even if it's just that they've been into your sales cycle and had one conversation with your salesperson, they're, they're much more likely to engage with longer form video. In fact, they want longer form video. They, they want you to, to teach them, educate them, inform them. Awesome. Sanjay, I think, so, I mean, if someone's really just starting out uh, with this four-layer approach and they, they want to show a truly cold audience, they, they, assuming that they've got a target account list of uh, 30,000 people and they're, they're trying to show an absolute cold audience, a short video, what size would you recommend uh, the video should be? Like, should it be like 20, 30 seconds? Should it be like 40 seconds like you mentioned? Or is there a formula there? Yeah, so th there's no one size fits all formula. I think all B2B marketers understand that. But uh, as a good sort of general rule that a B2B marketer could then uh, apply to their own situation, um, we like to do it in, first of all, produce one video, uh, really good quality, a narrative of explaining what uh, your organization does, uh, what pain points you address, and, and more than anything, the one or two reasons why you're different from the other competitors that are almost definitely in the decision makers' newsfeed. We like to produce that to to be about ninety seconds to two minutes. Once you've got that video, that that's in a core piece of content that works across all of your marketing and sales functions for that product. But you want to shorten that video down to say forty seconds for a cold audience. So usually we like to take the intro of that video, which tends to be about the decision makers' pain points and maybe go into a bit of an explanation of what the service is, but cut it off at around 40 seconds. Then you can put it in front of a cold audience on either LinkedIn ads or Facebook ads or, or something similar. And you can get the platform to tell you who's watched 25% of that video. So who's shown some interest 
once they've shown that interest, you move them into layer two. And that's when you can start showing them um, different versions of that longer 90 second to two minute video, which really like they've already built that digital relationship with you. Now you can start engaging them and asking them. Awesome, Sanjay. I think it almost looks like uh, you're asking most B2B marketing companies uh, to become media companies, like Netflix kind of a companies. Did I get that right? I mean, uh, is that what you're advising? Yes and no. Yes and no. So that that's like that's the old um, Gary B adage, and I think all of us have heard it so many times, right? But but I think um, that is also a little bit unrealistic for a lot of B two B companies. I, I would say yes, definitely, um, you know, become a media company. But the truth is, ninety percent of B two B companies just don't have the capacity, don't have the time, don't have the people to become a media company, uh, and don't have the budget. Even if they work within an agency like ours, we don't usually suggest that they produce 50 videos one a week because it's just not practical. Uh, but I think I think your sentiment is right there. So you can have a good cadence where perhaps you produce one really good core piece of video content that explains your service maybe once a year. And then you can have a cadence where every month you have a, a longer form podcast kind of similar to this idea. Um, get your experts, uh, get your SMEs, uh, record a, a bit of a long form episode and then you can cut that up into into pieces i think a lot of b2b marketers understand that a lot of b2b B2 marketers know how to do that i think um that's that's a really really good key uh once you've got the content though you've got a skillfully lay it over layer it over that four layer framework all right that's that's nice i think uh that's good to hear so uh, so in the go to market motion uh sanjay i mean what role uh, do you think uh, video is playing uh, today? I mean, especially for B two B companies that have high ticket sizes, let's just say thirty k and above. Uh, what, what kind of role is video playing, and has it always been looked at as uh, a smaller version of what you can do? But is it actually becoming more and more important now? Uh, I think it's becoming more and more important. But I think uh, uh, I think a lot of B two B companies are still slow. To respond, everyone kind of has this feeling that video is the way to go. But when you don't know an agency that you trust, or when you don't have the the people in house, then it, it's really difficult to start creating videos because it takes a year of practice, or you know, a year of putting systems and processes and and things like that together. So, I think um, if if you're a company that has no videos at all, I think it's it's almost mandatory to start with just one or two videos that explain your service break it down for a decision maker who's almost always a lot less technical than you are in your niche so an explain out what you do and then the second video that's almost mandatory is why you're different from your top two or three competitors i think you've got to be able to get that message across really powerfully in say 90 seconds to two minutes and the only way to do that properly the only way to do that powerfully is through a well-crafted video. Awesome, uh, Sanjay. I think I, I think this is this is a message for a lot of B two B marketers out there. I think you know if you haven't gotten started on uh, video, I think uh, definitely I think it's, it's time that you consider video as an important asset. I think like Sanjay mentioned, you should have at least two assets. And uh, if you're down under in Australia and you're listening to this, I think definitely check out Visionary Digital Studios. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate the plug. Yeah. All right. And uh, like, I mean, you mentioned that, you know, uh, LinkedIn ads is so much better than uh, other ads, especially when it comes to B2B uh, for high ticket uh, sizes. Like, can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? And uh, let's just uh, dig a little deeper into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in my agency, we are platform agnostic. We've got really good case studies and really good clients on all the major platforms. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google ads, and LinkedIn ads. Um, haven't quite got to TikTok yet, but uh, but but you know what I mean. So so I have no bias. I don't. I have no interest in in trying to make people use the platform that that I use or anything like that. Um, so we've tried we've tried all platforms. Um, the reason I reason I prefer and almost always recommend LinkedIn ads for B two B high ticket specifically is actually because. Uh, the lead quality is so much better. So what we found, we, we've actually we actually run um, my agency's com- company's ads on both platforms, so we can compare. What we find is 
when, when you're running Facebook ads, your lead cost is almost half as much as LinkedIn. So significantly cheaper, but the quality of leads on LinkedIn is four to five times better. And when you're thinking about, uh, when you think about more than just lead generation, when you're thinking about a whole business or a four layer framework, then every time you bring in a poor quality lead, that's very, very costly because you, you need sales resources to chase them down. And when they don't show up to a, a call, that's you know 15 minutes of an expensive salesperson's time that's been wasted. And you've got to give them 20 follow-up calls over the next four months and, uh, and that sort of thing. Whereas with LinkedIn, you can be very targeted about who you put your content in front of. So um, you, know, you can put your content in front of company sizes by employee. Um, so essentially anyone who comes through the funnel, you know that they can afford your services. You can even target by revenue. So you know, that's another another layer of, of knowing that, okay, once they, I'm speaking to them, it's going to be a valuable conversation. Even if they don't buy, it's going to be a, a really good connection. So it's worth spending you know, three or four times extra to acquire a lead on LinkedIn because on the back end, you make um, so much more profit and, and you save so much operational cost. Now, I think a lot of people who don't have experience in LinkedIn ads, a lot of a lot of marketers that don't have experience with LinkedIn ads, they they kind of don't try LinkedIn because they they know that cost for clicks more expensive, they know that cost for leads more expensive, but they don't consider how much uh, extra ROI you get off the back of really good qualified leads. That, that's true, Sanjay. I think uh, it's very important that B two B marketers don't send uh, bad leads to sales, and I think uh, don't earn the wrath of uh, sales team. Uh, and like that, I mean, I think you've got to be friends with sales. I think uh, that's that's kind of uh, how it works. I think uh, sending bad yeah. leads. Uh, yeah, I love that. I, I, I exactly how you said it is. Um, I, I totally agree. I think um, there's always a, a little bit of friction between sales and marketing, and I think one of the biggest reasons for that is because uh, marketing uh, they're it's often incentivized to bring in poor quality leads. They just they they're told to bring in as many leads as possible. So unconsciously that they don't even realize it but you know you should lower the quality of leads they're much cheaper uh and you know you hit your kpis but sales sales can't close them and then there's a bit of friction there but you know when you start bringing really high quality leads then uh you are the hero of the sales team exactly i think uh i think we want, want to be the best friend of our sales team and i think help them really close <laughs> faster I, th- that's, that's that's something that we are seeing uh, more and more often is uh, like sales and marketing coming together as one revenue team and I think uh, trying to close deals faster. Uh, but that's not something that you know we kind of do internally and I think we suggest that to a lot of our clients too. But yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love that you're thinking like that. I feel like that's a, a bit of a new mindset that's coming into B2B marketing. Um, I believe that not, not enough B2B marketing is especially in agency world uh, realize this yet or even consider it because you know they're, they're kind of incentivized for bringing in leads without thinking about the client sales team or without thinking about revenue i love that you guys are thinking about it okay that's that's good that you know we're thinking in the right direction then yes you are thank you and uh so sanjay i mean let's just shift gears a little bit from ads i mean we've been talking about ads uh, and let's just shift gears to organic i mean I mean, you, your agency does a lot of content marketing too. And uh, I want to ask you this question, like what is the importance of content marketing uh, as a go-to-market motion in the era of chat GPT? And what are you seeing uh, that's happening around you? I love it. Um, yeah, so we all know that content marketing is really important. Uh, everyone listening to the podcast is a, is a B2B marketer or, or similar. Um, but what I'm seeing is that, uh, say three years ago, we had great organic content uh, everywhere across all of our social platforms. And it used to bring in leads and it used to bring in sales. Uh, you know, it was, it was great. It was like a gold gold rush at the time. Um, but in the last few years, and especially now in the last year or two, we almost get no leads from our organic marketing. Um, and so what I'm seeing is that uh, organic is really important and working really well for our current audience. So as soon as someone has converted through our lead funnel, uh, or our clients lead funnel, and they, you know they're in the CRM. Then they're following our content, and then they then they see our organic posts. They engage with it and they love it. But we're seeing the cold audience doesn't really react so much, um, and very rarely do we get leads from our organic content that way. So when it comes to organic, I think really really important. 
but we've shifted to your organic is about your current audience only. Make sure your insights are for that layer three or layer four audience that is actually following your work and, and really wants to consume it. Touch EBT, um, beautiful, beautiful uh, invention and kind of a uh, uh, beautiful addition to, to marketing in general. Um, I think that that actually makes our work as content marketers even more important. So I think the rise of chat GPT, we've already all seen it. We're going to see it more and more. Um, everyone's trying to automate their content. And for the first time, um, releasing content at scale is accessible to almost everyone. That'll continue over the next year. But what's happening, I think all of us can see it, is um, there's a rise, a significant rise of really low quality content. It's just, it's rubbish essentially, uh, recycled from chat GVT. The people posting it often aren't experienced content marketers. So they're recycling chat GVT. They're posting it thinking, oh, wow, well, I'm a great marketer. I'm, I'm releasing you know, a, con- a piece of content every day. But the truth is the, the substance of that content is, is just recycled. So there's nothing creative about it. There's nothing different about it. Um, it's exactly the same as the you know, 100 other people that are doing the same strategy in their niche. So I think uh, I, I feel as B2B marketers, as content marketers, producing really powerful, profound, insightful content based on really deep experience is going to be so much more valuable because you'll be one that, you know, the one in a thousand people that's, that's really doing this based on experience and insight rather than recycling the same thing as everyone else. Uh, I'm interested whether you agree or not. Oh, no, I mean, we've seen like tons and tons of content uh, that has been put out. And I think, I think it's just insane uh, the kind of low quality that is uh, being put out these days. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, even if they do uh, end up ranking today, I think I'm pretty sure they're going to get hit uh, when high quality content actually does take over. In a totally. way, I think, in a way, I think uh, what we're seeing is, I think, you know, ChatGPT has actually thrown the light on uh, content creation as a, as an important piece that you should do. And now, because people have actually started creating, the high quality content actually gets more importance. So I think, I think it's just a progression like any other platform, I guess. I'm with you. I'm with you, and I totally agree. Um, but I'm I'm being really, really deliberate. Uh, I, I I'm I'm sure you understand this, and a lot of marketers know this sort of thing. Like when when a new technology um, arises in a niche, the the last people to embrace and understand the power of that technology is that niche. So, um, you know, when when ChatGPT arises in in content marketing, I think for a lot of us marketers, we immediately just assume that it's it's worthless, and you know, our ways are better because all of our investment and all of our last few years have been invested in, in in producing manual content. So I'm being very specific in keeping my mind open, um, using it. I'm, I'm quite uh, proficient with ChatGBT. I'm yet to find it in all, almost any application in content marketing. I'm yet to find it uh, useful when it comes to uh, producing high level content. But you know, I'm making sure I keep my mind open, and um, maybe there'll maybe there's a time when the AI takes over, and it's going to be better marketers than us. Uh, I'll meet you right there at the forefront of uh, ChatGPT. Then you're, you're being uh, super smart there, uh, uh, Sanjay. I think you know you understand that the world can change at any point, and I think uh, it's really smart that you know you're keeping your eyes and ears open uh, to new ideas. Appreciate it. So. Uh, so, so here's a here's a roundup, uh, Sanjay. I think I want to ask you this uh, question: like, as a roundup of video content, ads, and everything put together, like, what are the most common mistakes uh, you think uh, GTM teams are doing these days? I think, what do you think they can do to avoid this? I think uh, the most common mistakes are, um, apart from not using video at all, and then uh, kind of like floundering with uh, with trying to use uh, other content, which is, you know, text-based content or image-based content simply can't be as effective because you know it's just it's just got a, a lot less content, a lot a lot less communicated in it. I think uh, that's the first one, but but I, I guess everyone probably realised that was going to be my perspective anyway. I think the biggest mistake when it comes to using video is not understanding your audience deeply enough and specifically enough. So. Um, if you don't understand your audience on a really deep, specific, granular level, and then produce video content that speaks to that that depth, then essentially your message becomes diluted. Your your message becomes the same as 
every other company in your niche. So, you know, if you're producing a video that says we produce great relationships with all of our clients, or if you're producing a video that sells, uh, we get better results than anyone, then, you know, your messaging is exactly the same as 90% of companies who say the exact same thing in almost every niche. Um, so you got to be really deep, really specific and make sure that your video really hits the mark on that, um, on that exact pain point in the exact way it's running through your decision makers mind. All right. I think, uh, understanding your audience, I think some, some of the basics that most marketers, I mean, some of us, including me, uh, at times have not done well is understanding the customers really well. And that, that requires us to go talk to the sales team and like understand, Hey, what's happening? What are they saying? And, uh, what's resonating and what's not. And I think that's something, uh, most of us uh, should do talk to sales, understand what's happening and use those insights into the marketing. I love it. Uh, and what I, what kind of struck me as you said that is it's amazing how uh, almost every epoch of marketing, every era of marketing, every time marketing is upgraded, um, still the most important thing is, is that foundation of understanding your audience at such a deep and specific level. And, um, you know, let's, that, was, that applied back in the early days when we were writing thousands and thousands of letters to, uh, to you know, the mass population and it still applies now when you're writing, uh, when you're crafting videos for LinkedIn. That's awesome, uh, Sanjay. I think this has been a pleasure. Uh, we'll just end up with like one short feature. Well, I'll just ask you like five rapid fire questions and I think you'll just have to like answer it like really, really super short, uh, uh, slick, maybe like, you know, just like less than 10, 15 seconds if that is okay. Love it. Yeah. Let me just uh, get loose. All right. Go for it. All wow. right. All right. The top three platforms that you like uh, to run ads on, B2B ads on. Uh, LinkedIn ads, Facebook ads, Google ads. I feel I feel very boring saying that, and that's how it is. I actually wanted to add something. I, I got a really uh, really helpful insight that I think can uh, can help the audience. I think one thing that um, that everyone could implement that can really create a massive impact that a lot of marketers aren't seeing is running video or even just content ads to your current customers. Um, and rather than running ads to get conversions with a conversion objective, run your ads to get video views if you've got video or to get engagement only on the feed. And so your your audience is consuming the content on the feed because you're not um, specifically optimizing for conversions, your your content tends to get shown significantly more. Uh, and what will happen is you won't your your CRM won't really show results. They won't be converting through landing pages, but you'll notice month by month um, your current clients reaching out for more services, old clients reaching out for, for um, new services, investors reaching out, opportunities coming from everywhere. I wanted to put that nugget in. Sorry to ruin your flow. Let's go back to the quick five questions. All right. And the, 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 the site's pretty useful. Can I just like double click on that? Yeah, please, please do. I, that's, it's a really um, profound insight that that we've implemented uh, in our business and, and all of our customers over the last few months and we're seeing really good results. So I wanted to make sure I said that. Please double click. Right. So, uh, Sanjay, you mentioned that, you know, uh, run video ads to your own customers and like keep keep doing this for a while. And I think uh, that helps you uh, expand the accounts. And I think, how long, I mean, have you done this? And I think, what, what are the kind of results that you see? Uh, so, we've been doing it for six months um, across our all of our platforms, but all, also across all of our clients. Um, and repeatedly, we see quite profound results. Um, so essentially just by having the content in front of an audience that's already engaged, that already likes you and knows you and trusts you, um, just just by having the content in front of them um, and because it's, it's significantly cheaper to tell LinkedIn ads or Facebook ads to, to optimize the video views and just put your videos in front of people, when they're consuming it, the content on the feed, they don't need to click your, to a landing page or anything like that. If you've got a video that goes for two minutes, you can provide as much insight as a whole landing page um, or, you know, really, really long form uh, social media posts. Um, and just by having that content in front of your audience almost every day with a, with such a small budget, um, it brings up opportunities. When they're talking about anything around your service, they feel like, oh, well, you know, you're at the top of mind. We should bring them in and, and, and ask them or, you know, anytime they need a service that's similar to yours, then you're the, naturally the first person they reach out to because they're, they're seeing you on your newsfeed every day and they're being educated by your content. 
and we're not specifically only talking about videos, right? You also mentioned social media posts. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So what we found is, um, we, obviously we started with video is cause that's our, you know, that's, that's our specific expertise. Um, but then what we found is with our organic long form content, if we put that into both LinkedIn ads and Facebook ads, and we, we put some ad spend behind it only at our current customers. So people that are in our CRM marked as closed one. Uh, and then we put a little bit of ad spend on it. Not, not much. It doesn't cost much to, to put your, um, content in front of a thousand people a day, as long as you're not asking them to click through to a, a landing page, you're literally just asking them to watch a video on the feed or consume a long form post on the feed. Um, normal image ads are fine. Carousel ads are fine or videos either way, as long as they're just consuming it on the feed. Um, you don't, you don't really see form sign-ins, um, cause they're consuming it on the feed, but what you'll know, what you, what you'll see in your CRM is that. People are reaching out to you randomly, your customers, while you're on a call, they're asking you about different services because they've read something on their, their newsfeed from your company. Um, we're, no, we're noticing almost unanimous results across our client base with that. So I think that's something that every company should try. And it's, it's such a low budget um, idea that testing it's a no-brainer. That's that's an amazing insight, Sanjay. So I think... Uh... Just, just to clarify, right? I think uh, the the goal there is to not get them to a landing page, not get them to fill the form, not get them to do any action. It's just show up there and just be right there, and that that's about it, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it's it's important that your content has uh, profound insight in it. You want it to be long form. You want it to be very different from anything else that they are seeing from your competitors. I, I guess that's that's the fundamentals of marketing, but. Uh, assuming people listening to your podcast where B2B marketers, I'm assuming most of them already have that down pat. So if you can just put that those insights in front of your audience in the place where they want to consume it, they don't want to click through to a landing page. Like you lose, you, you lose such a big proportion of your audience when you ask them to click through to a landing page. The platform also deprioritizes your content when you're clicking through to a landing page. But when you're asking them to consume it on the feed, it takes them, you know, 20 seconds to, to read through a long form post. Maybe it takes 30 seconds to two minutes to, to watch your video, but you know, they can do that on the train. They can, they can do that um, anywhere. They, they don't have the commitment of clicking through to a landing page that has you making impressions in their mind and, and really giving tangible value to them almost every day. If you've got enough content and that leads to, you know, lifelong customers and, and more sales and we're seeing measurable results. Seems like a really, really, really smart way to land and expand. And I think, uh, like, I mean, uh, th this is something I haven't uh, heard before because I think we, we, I mean, as marketers, we tend to only focus on how to convert, how to convert. But I think the post conversion event uh, that you mentioned about, I think it's, this seems like a super insight. And I think, uh, I think most of uh, the listeners and even us, I think, would like to give it a shot. I love that. I, I think it's like a beautiful, like, circular segue. I didn't intend this, I don't think you did, but like, so that is the that that's the four layer framework. So you're not just thinking about layer one and layer two, which you know every marketing agency and every marketer thinks about. You're thinking about layer three and layer four, where the most possible value is to uh, to your customer if you're an agency or to the business if you're in house. Awesome, Sanjay. Okay, uh, can I can I get back to uh, the rapid fire? Ooh, yeah, let's do it. So, what are you using video ads mostly for? New biz or expansion or for renewal? Um, so for visionary and, and across our client base, uh, we're using them in all four layers. Uh, so, and, and, and all, all of the above, uh, I'm going to say the most use is, is surprisingly layer four. So converting current customers into new business. Um, what we realize is that the majority of that customer lifetime value is after that initial first sale is made. So, you know, that's where you can make the best impact and and you don't have all that overhead with a with a cold with a cold audience you have the overhead of having to run them through a long sales process with an expensive sales team um and then you know onboard them and then build trust and but with your with your layer four current customers you already have that trust um you're already giving them so much value um you know you, you don't need a long sales process anymore uh and and you know them so well that you can deliver so much more value than you can with a new client. All right, that's insightful. Sorry about that. That was meant to be a quick fire. 
No, that that was really good. And then uh, that, that was very interesting. Okay. All right. Um, so what are you planning to do with the ad budgets in uh, the next year? Are you trying to increase? Are you trying to maintain? Or are you trying to cut your ad budgets? I like to gradually increase and, and continually increase, uh, you know, where all marketers at heart. So as a marketer, part of my, I feel part of my success is increasing ad budgets, um, not only in my agency, but also in our clients. Um, so I want to increase, um, I don't have a set strategy, to be honest, in terms of um, what layer I want to increase in. Um, we have been really focused on layer four for the last you know, year or two now, it, it, uh, it, even before we've been implementing this for clients. Um, and I feel like we've got that really, really on point. Um, you know, two years ago, we were just selling one video. Um, these days, we're selling full service to almost every, every client. So yeah, sorry, I got carried away there. I'm going to say, I don't know. I'll, um, I'll keep adjusting based on results. What are your three key uh, elements uh, for a successful uh, GTM motion? Okay, so um, number one, client avatar, understand your audience so profoundly, significantly more than they do themselves, mandatory, and have it documented in their words, number one. Um, number two, uh, obviously I'm going to say video, um, so at least one, preferably two, really precise videos explaining your service on your decision maker's terms. Uh, and one video explaining why you're different to your top few competitors. And then third element is uh, a way of distribution, um, preferably LinkedIn ads if you're doing deals at a 30K or more. If not, oh, let me ask you this question. Which three channels are your uh, favorite? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be super boring here, uh, but, you know, just going to be real. Uh, LinkedIn ads it is my favorite. Uh Second favorite is Facebook slash Insta. Put them into one category. Uh, and then third favorite's Google. Sorry, I can't be a little bit um, unique with that one. Those are just my favorites. Uh, thanks, Sanjay, uh, for uh, making it to this podcast. And I think uh, we like super enjoyed uh, the four-layer uh, approach uh, to B2B marketing. And I think uh, there's a ton of insight here uh, on uh, how to use videos to actually close high-value deals. And I think uh, most of you would be surprised at how you can actually use videos to actually close more value from the same customers that you already have. And I think that's something that, you know, I've learned a lot uh, from your layer four uh, framework, Sanjay. Uh, thanks for uh, being uh, a guest on this podcast. Uh, we appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, Abhishek. You're a great interviewer. I really enjoyed it and um, hope everyone got a lot of value. Much love for the B2B marketing community.